Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sara van Geren, aka Mr. VG. And this is video two slash one slash, oh, I'm just having fun with these videos. Because after doing the first video, I kind of realized that, you know what? We need to actually dive into the basic formulas you need for probabilities, okay? Because it's very easy for us as teachers, you know, to do a video or to, you know, to start with a topic and then realize, oh my goodness, I assume you guys know the formulas. But my assumption could be completely, utterly wrong. So what am I going to do? I'm revisiting the basic formulas that's involved in grade 11 probabilities. So when we look at this, these formulas, I would like to start off with the basic probability formula. Now, this probability formula, ladies and gentlemen, is going to kind of, how can I put it, be the foundation of everything that we are going to do in these chapters. Everything is going to go back to the, this formula. Grade 11, grade 12, we are just going to look at different tools to get to the probability formula. Now, what is the probability formula? The probability formula says that if I'm looking for the probability of A happening, so the probability that something happens, the probability of it raining, the probability of you winning the lottery, any probability then that must be equal to the number of ways that A could happen divided by the number of ways possible. N of A over N of S. Look at the difference in notation. P of A meaning probability that A happens. N of A is how many times a can happen. So, for instance, if I look at the probability that I roll a one on the dice, that's one out of six. But what is n of one? So, how many ones are there? There's one one on the dice. I hope that you're getting this. Now, if I look at this, the probability that A happens, and this is important, ladies and gentlemen, that n is the number of ways. And then we also have n of s, which is the sample space, which means all possibilities that are possible. Okay? So that is sample space. We saw that in the previous video when we looked at the Venn diagram. A very important other formula that you are going to spend time on in this, in this whole um chapter randomly at times you are going to get to the union formula which says the probability that a or b happens is the probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a and b so if i look at this where does this formula come from well, let's look at a Venn diagram. I know we haven't spent much time on Venn diagrams so far, but it's important that you understand where a formula comes from. I'm going to color in the probability of A or B. So that just means that it's going to lie either in A or in B or maybe even in both. So that is the green colored in part. Now, what is the probability of A? Well, that is the orange colored in part. If I add the probability of B, that is now the red colored in part. Do you see that there's a little part there in the middle that has been colored in twice? Well, that is the probability of A and B. So that is the um, that little I in the middle. And that's why we have to remove it because we colored it in twice. Okay, I hope that you're getting that. Okay, but that's where the formula comes from, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, in the end of the previous video, we, I spoke about the mutual exclusivity, which is 
two events that cannot happen at the same time. So if I look at that in terms of a Venn diagram, it will look like this. A and B are not overlapping and therefore they are mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. So the probability of A and B must be zero. They love to ask this. Your teachers love to ask it. So please pay attention to it. The second thing we talked about was independent events. The independent events, remember, is that the outcome of event A has no effect on the outcome of event B. For instance, I flip a coin, I roll a dice. Whatever the outcome of the coin is not going to have an effect on the outcome of the dice. Unless the coin, for instance, hits the dice and it changes the outcome. Ooh, that's an interesting experiment. Whoa, I've never really thought about that. With independent events, remember the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Always we're going to go back to this formula the moment we hear the words independent events. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's making sense for you. Remember we're going to apply this these formulas, all four of them, in the upcoming video. So you've got to make sure you've got them down. This is Mr. VG signing out. Have a beautiful rest of your day, ladies and gents. Cheers.